Hoarders all collect different things, and Roy is unable to throw out even the simplest household item. He's also inherited the contents of three relatives' flats. And from broken toasters to incontinence pads, suitcases to mustard pots, he's intent on keeping the lot. Uh, papers, boxes, magazines, old clothes. Roy hasn't thrown away any clothes all our married life, I don't think. It's the brown khaki pair, which are perfect apart from one tear. But that is the only problem with that particular pair of very good trousers and clothes is to be worn and repaired when they need repair. Until they're worn out. When did you last discard some clothes? to the rag and bone man. We don't have rag and bone men these days. Roy has filled up 11 rooms and he's even gone as far as swamping his side of the couple's bedroom. How do you feel about that? Awful. Hate it. What can I do about it? There's nothing of mine there. As a war baby, I was clearly taught that everything had a value. You know, even the potato peelings had to go in the pig food bin in those days. Coupled with the fact that my father was unemployed, so money was never plentiful. So I was brought up to value everything. Most hoarders are only identified after the age of 50, when they're at their most extreme. Roy was officially diagnosed five years ago, and it's something he finds hard to accept. I felt it was almost a slander, an insult. I dispute that I do hoard. I don't go out of my way to collect anything like the proverbial bag lady. But yes, I am certainly slow at sorting and discarding. Roy's refusal to admit that he hoards is a constant source of tension in his marriage. It just makes me very sad, because this room is decorated and it could be a nice little room. It is a nice little room. It isn't a nice little room as it is, Roy. It's horrid. It's the same old story, isn't it, really? The rest of the family has suffered too. As the eldest child, the couple's daughter, Rachel, has had to bear the brunt. I would describe a lot of it as junk. Very rarely had friends come to my house. And Mum was always quite upset about people coming to the house. Roy's hoarding is now the worst it's ever been. But he's about to be forced to change the habits of a lifetime. I think there needs to be a concerted effort to try and remove things from the house. Roy's family are taking action and have summoned him to a meeting to issue an ultimatum. I've been very patient over I the years. I know you have. I realise that now. There are times when my patience is where it's a bit thin, really. Compulsive hoarding is a form of OCD. 78-year-old divorcee Lloyd lives in South Central Los Angeles and was diagnosed three years ago. His hoarding is so extreme that he slept outside his house for 20 years because he couldn't get through the front door. There were bicycle parts floor to ceiling and wall to wall. There was really no room to move around in the home. One bedroom, which was the larger of the two bedrooms, was actually the bike room. In that room alone, there were 5,000 bikes or bike parts. All sorts of wheels and seats and handlebars and pedals. Having anything in quantity appeals to me. Uh, it's sort of like um, in Monopoly. It's nice having a lot of the, the paper money. His bike collection was so exceptional that in a country with over a million hoarders, Lloyd still hit the headlines. And he became America's most famous hoarder when the high-rating Today Show gave him top billing. Is your house a mess? Never throw anything away? Well, we're about to make you feel a whole lot better. Lloyd Drum throws nothing away. Nothing. 
Well, I guess I'd rather be famous as a hoarder than famous as a serial killer or something. <laughs> Lloyd's passion for bikes started when he was a psychology student at UCLA and worked part-time in a repair shop. But it wasn't until the late 70s that Lloyd started hoarding. It was triggered when he lost his job as a computer programmer. Penniless, Lloyd resorted to roaming the streets, looking for cans and bottles to recycle for cash. He soon started spotting bicycles, which had been thrown away. I was out on trash day looking at what was available, and I'd see bicycles by the curb ready to be picked up, and uh, if I left them there, they'd just be treated as junk, and I could, I could rescue them. Lloyd was very isolated. The more that he collected, the less he could have people into his home. And once the isolation starts, you build relationships with stuff rather than people. For a hoarder, losing their possessions is a traumatic experience. But by 2003, the bikes had taken over Lloyd's yard and his house. LA County officials had cleared him out twice. But each time, Lloyd had started collecting again. He was high on their blacklist. His property had accumulated more stuff on it again. The departments were very frustrated. They didn't know what to do. They had 18 charges against me. To me, it seemed ridiculous. It might be a, a law. It's a ridiculous law. Lloyd faced a tough decision. Throw away his 5,000 bike parts, or be sent to jail for a year. The judge, to impress upon me that he could send me to jail for it, he did put me in jail for part of a day. He said, next time you come, uh, bring your Reeboks because you'll need them in, in jail. But in a last ditch attempt to keep him out of prison, Lloyd's lawyers contacted Dorothy Brininger, who's made a career out of organizing people. We organize people's lives, whether it's a closet, a corporation, files, or hoarding cases. She agreed to take Lloyd on and raised $50,000 from well-wishers to organize the ultimate clear-out. In order to not go to jail, Lloyd had to get his collection of bicycles to 15. Hi. On October 13th, 2003, Dorothy and her team descended on Lloyd's house for the most ambitious clear-out of her career. We probably had over 120 different people work the job over 1,500 man hours, six, 700 garbage bags, 13 different dumpsters. As well as the bikes, Lloyd had over 40 TVs, 50 stereos, and 10 years worth of newspapers and mail. They say you gotta have it cleaned down to the ground, and I resented that, but I guess I knew I had too many bikes. To the extent that I was in trouble because I had them, getting rid of them was getting me out of trouble. Finally, a whole month later, the last bicycle was disposed of, and the house was completely cleared. And as America's favorite hoarder, Lloyd's clear out was even premiered on NBC as a home makeover. The bedroom then and now. The living room. Do you like it? Oh, yeah. But if hoarders aren't supervised following a clear-out, the chances are they will start collecting again. So now, three years after Lloyd's last clean-up, it's the moment of truth. Dorothy's coming to check up on him. And if he's relapsed, then the authorities could threaten him with jail once again. <laughs> 